Greetings, Great 28 facilitators. We are in week seven of our study this fall on what Jesus wants to know. A look at some of the questions that Jesus asks in order to reveal people's hearts, in order to reveal something about himself and what he calls us to as his disciples. These last two weeks will be in John 21, this week looking at verses 15 through 19, where three times Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? So a familiar text, uh, just a couple comments on some of the questions that you'll be discussing in your group. Uh, the first question uh, has to do with the context, uh, which is simply that Peter has denied Jesus three times before the resurrection, uh, before the crucifixion and resurrection. It is now after the resurrection. And interestingly, Peter has gone fishing. If you'll recall, uh, Peter was a fisherman by vocation before Jesus called him to follow him. And so there's some question as to whether Peter was simply out uh, uh, distracting himself from the events of the previous days, or if he had actually given up and decided it was time to return to life as a fisherman. Uh, either way, Jesus appears to him, him on the shore. Peter recognizes him, swims to the shore, and then Jesus has this conversation with Peter. Uh, so that's the context. Uh, why does Jesus address Peter publicly in front of the other disciples? And simply because Peter's failure was public, it was well known by all, and it would be important that the others saw that, in fact, Jesus had forgiven Peter and restored him to his place of ministry. Why does Jesus use the name Simon instead of Peter? Uh, there's a little speculation here, but there's some thought that, uh, if you'll recall, when Peter confessed Jesus as the Christ, Jesus said to him, uh, Simon, you are now Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock, a play on that word, his confession, upon that confession of faith, Jesus would build his church. And there's some implication here that Jesus does not use Peter the rock because Peter was anything but a rock in his denial of Jesus. Uh, but it's a reminder to, to Peter that Peter rock, apart from Christ, you're just Simon. You're, there's nothing solid about you at all. And who are, uh, what or who are these Jesus refers to when he asks, do you love me more than these? Uh, there's some debate over this. There's not necessarily one right answer. Some would say, uh, Peter, do you love me more than your vocation of fishing? Uh, others have said, do you love me more than your sin, your, your attempt to protect yourself from danger by denying me? Um, I think a more interesting one is simply, uh, could be a referring to the other disciples who are around them at that point. Uh, if you recall, uh, before Jesus went to the cross, and told Peter he would deny him, Peter said, even if all these, referring to the other disciples, fall away, I will not. There was some boldness and some pride uh, in Peter's expression of love to Jesus. And it could be that Jesus is making a reference to them and, and simply indicating, you know, Peter, you have a great love, and yet you put yourself above these others, and yet you're the one uh, that failed miserably. Well, why does Jesus ask three times, do you love me? Why does, what, what does Jesus accomplish by asking the question uh, three times? Again, it seems like it's a direct link to th Peter's three denials. Uh, Peter has, or Jesus addresses those directly, brings up the three denials by asking him three times, do you love me? Uh, but it also has the, the purpose of, of letting Peter and the rest of the disciples and even us know that failure is not final, that Peter or that Jesus can take on our sin. He looks at our sin square in the face and yet announces forgiveness and brings restoration to Peter as a disciple and an apostle. Uh, read Matthew 4, 18 through 20, what has changed in Jesus' call of Peter and what remains the same. This is when Jesus first called Peter. Uh, and, and from when he was fishing and, and Jesus says to Peter, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. So what's changed? Well, the, the image has changed. Uh, Jesus originally used an image Peter was very familiar with, fishing, and then translated that into a ministry of fishing for men. But now Jesus has changed the metaphor. The metaphor is now shepherding. Uh, really is the word that we get the word pastor or pastoring. Uh, Jesus is communicating to Peter, Peter, uh, it's time to leave behind the fishing. You are now a pastor of my church. Uh, but what's remained the same? Follow Jesus. That is the key. Regardless of your vocation or your call in life, we are all called to follow him. 
Uh, most commentators believe the phrase, you'll stretch out your hands, alludes to death by crucifixion. Why do you think Jesus includes this information now? Uh, likely it's a little bit of accounting the cost. Uh, Peter has denied Jesus in front of servant girls, uh, and he needs to know, this, if he's going to follow Jesus, this is where it leads. Um, okay, moving on. How would you feel if you were Peter? I don't know how you would feel, but I trust you will know how you feel. Uh, how would this experience prepare Peter to be a leader in the church? Uh, I'm guessing it would give him great compassion towards those who fail. Uh, it would give him a model of how do you restore someone uh, once they have turned and repented. How do you communicate that forgiveness and restoration to the fellowship of believers? And how might it be used to hinder his leadership? Uh, undoubtedly, there were critics who would point out to his failure and question his qualifications for being a leader in the church. Again, going back to an earlier question, why it was important that Jesus do this publicly so that others could see Jesus' affirmation of Peter and his call for him to feed his sheep. And what does this text teach us about what it means to follow Jesus? I'd spend a little time here, maybe explore this a little bit. Uh, it really is a picture of the Christian life, of being called and failing and repenting and being restored and sent again and again and again and again. Um, it, it's a great statement that, that our relationship with Jesus depends on his love for us more than our love for him. Um, it, it's a statement that really as Peter began to follow Jesus, so he will continue. Jesus simply says, follow me as he concludes this passage. Uh, and then it really stands out, uh, Jesus' reference to Peter uh, being crucified, that the way of Jesus is the way of the cross. Uh, and then I think the remaining questions that uh, get a little bit closer uh, to application uh, are pretty straightforward. So, uh, again, you're almost through this semester. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this study. If you have comments, critiques, feedback, uh, you can use the feedback form on the website uh, where you get these videos and handouts. I uh, would love to hear from you, uh, but again, I continue to pray for you. Thanks.